and a bunny standing in the backyard. You guys are missing it. They're outside. Boop. So today's sponsor is Hysia. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel, you know that I already have had Hysia as a sponsor. Uh, about a year and a half ago, they sent me another set of boots, some garden boots that I absolutely love and have worn a lot. <laughs> they actually became my go-to slip-on shoes to go anywhere and do anything. This year, they have the new work boot, and I've been able to wear it for about a week or so, and uh, this is a fantastic. It is super comfortable. It's almost like having a tennis shoe on, and it's warm, and it's waterproof, and it keeps all the mud and yuck and gunk and snow and such that we've been dealing with here in northern Idaho off of my feet. And it also has this little grab tab that I use to pull them on, so it makes them very easy to slip on. And it has this little shelf here, I don't know, I'm going to try to zoom in, that you can easily, as you're taking them off, put your other shoe on that and, and pull your foot out. And I really like that. It makes it... It makes it very simple to get these off. So if you have not tried Hysia and you want an inexpensive boot that can work for you on your farm, on your homestead, in your garden, just that looks nice, that you can wear all, all over the place, this is your boot. There's a link in the description. Go check them out. Look through all of the ones that they have. They have many different kinds. They have very beautiful ones all the way into work boots and such. And so I highly recommend them. I uh, actually are going to, I'm going to be ordering a few other pairs because I really like their boot. They do have a 100% um, guarantee. If something happens to the boot, if it gets destroyed, you can send it back to them and they will send you a new pair. So thank you for watching us. We are very appreciative of our sponsors that help us continue to keep making these videos. So go down. If you're looking for a boot, check them out. Description. The link is in the description and let's get back to our build. Okay, guys. So I'm actually going to paint the inside of these cabinets before I move on to actually building the frames. There's just such little room in here. And since it's raining outside, uh, and I'm, I actually would prefer cutting the plywood outside because of the mess that it's gonna make. So I can do this today. It's supposed to rain or snow all day long. So I can do this part today and uh, hopefully tomorrow we won't have any rain or snow. It's supposed to just be gray. So be, I'll, I'll be able to get on to cutting um, out the face of each one of these. And I'm gonna paint those before they get put on. So I need to go over to Benjamin Moore and get my paint for this and the bottoms. And then we'll be able to get on to making our drawers and doors. I'm, just, I'm like so excited for that. I am thinking of painting my refrigerator um, to match. So what do you guys think about that? I, I also think that I'm going to put either paint the front of my um, dishwasher or do like one of those faux fronts on it so that it also matches. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think about that. If you guys have done that, if you've used that um, refrigerator paint. I have not, so that would be a total new thing for me. Um, but let's get to painting. So ideally it would have been better to have these painted before they were actually put up. But my thought process was I was just gonna polyurethane them and um, keep them the wood grain. But there's a lot of knots in them and I decided that since this is such a tiny space that anywhere the light would reflect would be a really good idea. So I also made the decision to do glass doors um, on these upper cabinets. So painting them kind of was a last um, minute decision. So this is just some paint that I had uh, sitting around. It's actually half of the can is frozen and it's what I've been doing the whitewashing with, and so it's kind of awful, um, but it is going on, and it does keep that country rustic look that I have and that I like, 
I definitely do an intermix of country and modern and kind of try to blend them together. So I wasn't real concerned about this being perfect. Now, since I finished painting these and polyurethaning them, I'm going to be re-sanding them down because I used an oil-based polyurethane that I had purchased that I was just going to put on bare wood, not reading it and seeing that I actually was not supposed to put this over paint, so it yellowed, so it kind of looks awful. So I'm going to re-sand all of this down and then re-polyurethane it with a water-based poly. I also purchased, um, it, it goes on the glass so that it actually will have a decoration on the glass of these doors for the uppers. So I'm pretty excited about that. So if you guys have been following along, you know that this is a vlog style build here. And if you're new, there you go. It's a vlog style build. And so I'm just showing you what I'm getting done as I'm going along. And then we'll do a full walkthrough at the end. And I may end up piecing things together where it is a start to finish video, but for now, I don't have that. I just have what I'm doing as I'm going along and, and putting these things together and building this kitchen. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. And so it's been a lot of fun. It's been a huge learning experience for me. There's definitely things that I would do different. And then there's things that, you know, based on how my life is lived right now this is the absolute way to do it and i'm working around a lot of um basically i'm living in a construction site <laughs> that has been difficult but getting this kitchen to this point um and and seeing that we're coming really close to it being finished has been really exciting and I can't wait to get my stuff out of storage and actually get it put in and have my stuff so that I can have a little bit more of a normal life. So this paint color, when you see finished, really nice finished cabinets in houses, they have this, it's kind of a yellowish tan inside. And that's what I was looking for whenever I picked this paint up. And I did get this paint at Home Depot because Benjamin Moore was not open the evening whenever I ran in to go pick this up. Um, so this is a Home Depot paint and I do not remember the color of it. I really just looked at trying to match that color that would be inside a finished cabinet. And again, the whole point for doing this is helping preserve the plywood and making it a washable surface so that I can scrub and clean things out. I have noticed, this is my very first time also living with a um, fireplace or a um, wood stove, and I, it does get everything dirty. So I wanna be able to wash everything and keep everything as clean as I possibly can because I am building this space for long term. All of these cabinets have been built with three quarter inch plywood. It's the leaser expensive plywood, so it's finished on one side and it's not finished on the other. So this is something that I have learned in this process is paying attention to which side is finished and which side isn't because I really didn't. And so then I had to do quite a bit more sanding than I would have had to have done. Um, at this point because it would have been the finished side and not the unfinished side, not the rough side. I am glad that I decided to make these cabinets deeper. I was going to make this whole side 20 inch deep cabinets so that I would have a little bit more of a center aisle, but when I re-taped it out and I kind of looked at it, I decided there was enough space, even for two people. I mean, it's gotta be somebody that you like to scooch past each other um, but then that gives that four extra inches in the cabinets and I'm really glad that I made that final decision uh, right before I built these the cabinet uh, the countertop is gonna be a little bit of work and I'm gonna get to that once I finish getting these countertop ca cabinets organized
really pretty amazing how much a difference paint makes. I don't know if you guys can tell. So, this is a good example. Not finished, finished. So this will be painted the color of my cabinets. I still gotta do this side, but I gotta clean all that out. And it's really hot back here, so I'm gonna go cool off for a second, and then I'll come clean this out and paint this section. But I really like the difference that this is making, and I look at everything as how am I gonna clean that? And cabinets get gross, so I wanna make this very wipeable. I am gonna probably just go ahead and use the whole gallon. I mean, I do have these big guys over here, um, but if I at least get two coats, maybe three coats on, I did not prime this. I just put it straight on. Probably going to sand this first coat down a little bit because, you know, the grain raises after you paint it. And then uh, finish up with that and some polyurethane. And, um, but yeah, I, I, I like this color that I picked. So those of you that have been following along this journey know that I am a recovered alcoholic. I have eight and a half years of sobriety and I'm taking this opportunity to kind of share my story with you of recovery. Today's video we're talking about the fifth step um, of the 12 step Alcoholics Anonymous program and this step is about confection, confession. Um, you know, we admit to our higher power, myself, and another human being, um, the nature of my wrongdoings. And this, I think, is absolutely the hardest step because there's things that I have done in my past that I am not proud of. I have reacted to things in certain ways that I really wish I would have been better at doing. I have done things that I wish that I had not done. But what I learned in this step was one, to trust another person who has walked through this journey and done this, who can help guide me to do better. And I think that's the biggest key of this step is making sure that when you're talking to somebody about something that you've done that you want to change, that you're ready to change, or your reaction to things that you're ready to change you're ready to move into that emotional sobriety to make that change of I don't want to react to things in anger I don't want to manipulate people I don't want to um, continue to do the thing the things that I've done that have gotten me what I had gotten you know in the past to find my bottom so that is one of the reasons why finding a sponsor or somebody that you trust um, explicitly to do this particular step with. And I think that this really crosses over into even people who are not alcoholics. You know, when we're trying to figure out a situation that we've not been in before and how do I respond to this? How do I react to this and continue to be the person that I really want to be, which is a kind, generous person. But there are things in our lives today that can really make you mad, that can really upset you and can you can lose your serenity over. And for an alcoholic, those are the things that will make you have a relapse or that will start leading you towards a relapse if you're not really careful. But for everybody else, you know, Unless you've dealt with specific situations before, going into something that you don't know how to deal with and talking to somebody that you trust, that has already done that before and done it successfully, is such a huge tip. I had not been taught as a child how to deal with things because I had alcoholic and addict parents and they had no idea how to do things. So I think that this particular step really does apply to everybody. I think all these steps apply to everybody, but this one in particular of not being afraid to ask for advice from other people that have walked through a situation that you may be walking through and struggling. 
All right, so that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to start the polyurethane. I really, really like this. Um, and I'm glad I did it. I bounced back and forth of whether or not I was going to, but the fireplace is drying this plywood out really bad. And so the paint is going to help that to not be as big of a deal. So, all right, I'm going to call it a night. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Good morning, Chloe. Good morning. Do you have a visitor? Hi. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So today I'm actually doing my last cabinet. Let me show you. It's been really difficult working in this space because I bought all the plywood for the rest of this kitchen build been really hard working around it let me show you how much I got so lots of plywood here plywood over there plywood here <laughs> so it's basically everywhere we're gonna talk about that table in another video but I've got this sheet and I bought overhead lighting, just plug it in. But I got two of these to brighten this up a little bit more in here. But <laughs> I didn't think about a extension cord to connect the two and to actually connect this down to the Blue Eddy. So I'm not gonna be able to use these until this afternoon. So the last part of this video should be pretty bright <laughs> or tomorrow's video, next Wednesday's video. Um, but let me show you where I'm putting this last cabinet in between here. It's a very small space, but it really is the perfect space for my shop vac broom and dustpan and all of those little cleaning supplies that go with that. Um, and it'll kind of go right up to the edge of the sliding glass door. So that may look a little odd, um, in the end of things, cause, uh, edging that out may be weird, but this being such a small place and really wanting a space for everything to have its own place where it goes, I need to use all of these little spaces that I can. So this is 15 feet, 15 inches, <laughs> feet, 15 inches um, in width uh, and 24 inches in depth. And I think I want to make some sliders that slide in and out um, cause I'm possibly going to put an ironing board on one so that I can pull that out, put my ironing board down and then iron anything that I need to have iron. And since I like to sew, I actually do iron more than you would think, <laughs> but let's get to this. Back to talking about the fifth step. So during this particular fifth step, um, with my sponsor that I have now, we did this completely different than the first sponsor that I had. The first sponsor that I had, she just said, you know, read off your things. Okay, that's great. Let's move on. But I never had that sense of real relief. I was still really struggling with specific things. My second sponsor, who was an extremely in-depth sponsor, this is where we took the opportunity to find out exactly what my character defects were that were getting in the way of me having emotional sobriety. And that was a game changer. Figuring out exactly why I reacted to things the way that I did and why things affected me in a different manner than it did somebody else. So I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who is not an alcoholic and she said, oh yeah, when something triggers me, I definitely look at that as a space of, for something that I need to look at in myself. And that is exactly right. <laughs> like that is exactly what I do now. When I watch a show or I'm watching somebody else's video or I'm talking to somebody or I'm in a public setting and something just irritates me instantly angers me or makes me sad I no longer look at that other person of that's on you 
I look at why exactly did I react that way? And if I did react that way, I have some unfinished business to work on myself. And so then I take it back through the actual steps. Okay, so this is like day two. The grandkids are gone, so it's just me for today so I can do all the sawing and stuff that I need to do. It hurts their ears, even with the uh, headphones on, they don't like it, so I try not to do it. So that means I've taken almost all week off, but let me show you uh, how pretty this paint turned out. So what I ended up doing was painting the wrong side. This is the non-finished side because I put my toe kick in the wrong space. Um, but I did sand, but as you can see, there's some cracks and stuff, but there are no, uh, paint marks. So Benjamin Moore is a long, um, supporter of my channel and they have given this, uh, paint, donated this paint. Um, they're going to be the sponsor of the video whenever I finish all the painting, but Benjamin Moore in Ponderay. They're fantastic. If you're local, go check them out. I cannot sing more of their praises. Um, say hi to Virgil for me. <laughs> but I'm going to try and get this guy put up today. I've got a ton of other running around to do. This is our one pretty day of the week. Um, so yeah, I got a ton of stuff to do. I'm going to try to sand, re-sand these guys down. I'll explain what happened there. And then I have to re-polyurethane them with a the water-based versus an oil paint-based. If you know what happened, put it in the comments. <laughs> what a mess. And I tell you, by taking that back through the actual steps of AA, that has been an absolute game changer in my emotional state on a regular daily basis you know if i really stop and look at something and say my way has never really worked that well and i really want something different for my life so i really have to do something different in order to get something different and when i'm in charge and i'm the one that this is how it's going to go and that hasn't worked for me in the past, then I have to be willing to listen to somebody else or to follow somebody else's steps. And so for me, that's giving yourself a higher power. If I'm willing to listen and follow somebody else's steps, that's, that's a higher power. And so for me, that is God. So doing the Bible studies that I'm doing and reading the Bible and learning what the Bible says and God's word says for me has really helped and made a difference. And, you know, then taking that personal inventory of where was I wrong gives me back my control over my life. Because if I know what I've done wrong, then I can make some changes to do better and have a better life. And then having that person that I can bounce it off of and say, what do you think? How would you react to this? Have you dealt with this situation before? What did you do? What was the outcome? And then I'm walking into a situation where I kind of know how it's going to end. So I have found that my biggest character defect is my expectations of other people. And that has just gotten me in so much trouble. And, you know, really stopping and saying, people do what they can do. And if I'm expecting them to do what I can do or what I want done, then I'm going to fail every single time. And so learning to just be grateful that someone is giving you their time, space, and energy and reciprocating that as much as I possibly can, again, has been this huge game changer for me finding the level of happiness that I have now in my life. And, you know, it's really nice to know that there doesn't have to be somebody who is right in any situation. There really is just a difference of opinions. And that person's life has brought them to the decision that they've made. And my life has brought me to the decisions that I make. 
but now I get to actually make educated decisions versus emotional decisions based on doing my 12 steps. I hope this helps somebody and if you think it would help someone, please share it with them. That really is my goal of this whole thing. Look at me being all safe. <laughs> I actually like these. These came with the um, nail gun. So the problem that I'm having, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm not making like a perfectly straight cut. And it's because this is not a square cabinet. So it's actually wider in the back than it is in the front. And I'm just making it work. It actually doesn't really matter what this part um, it, that it's off that little bit amount because I'm actually making an insert that will slide in and out that holds, um, on one side, it'll hold the broom and all the dusting products and stuff like that. And then on the other side, it will have, um, my ironing board and anything that I need for ironing and that kind of stuff. Maybe like a mending kit if I was mending a hole in something or something like that. That'll be on that side. That'll be actually on the south side of it. So that'll, um, when it folds out, it'll fold out into this big area. And then this inside part will have the broom and dustpan and all that stuff will hang on it. So hopefully it'll make sense. Well, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, uh, this is something that I've needed a place for these things to be to get out of my way. And so moving the coffee stand from here to over at the end of the window has freed up this space so that I can actually build this here. So that was kind of the thought process behind that, giving me extra space and extra room. But I'm gonna show you, well, you guys probably already saw it. Um, it has been so hard building these big cabinets in this tiny space, it is doable. But I think that's the reason why things aren't perfect. What, what'd you steal there, Chloe? What did you steal? I'm going to go see because I felt you drag it by my leg. What did you steal, Missy? Oh, you didn't, it hit my leg, so you put it back. <laughs> okay, I am also not, I haven't set up the um, dust collection thing, so I want to get that set up. But look at this. Like everything is everywhere <laughs> it's been it's been absolutely crazy moving around and shimming around everything so getting this done i think is going to make a huge difference and i will be able to move around quite a bit easier uh but by the end of the day i'm wanting to get this cabinet done and do a good cleanup so that uh i can move around easier I cut my hair, you guys, myself, I did it myself, and I actually went and took a shower yesterday at the YMCA, <laughs> so that's why it's down, so don't yell at me about it getting stuck in things, <laughs> I never wear my hair down anymore.